Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a pair of postpartum underwear or a postpartum nappy to deal with bleeding after birth. Before we get started, if you're one of my um, male viewers then this video is probably not for you, I'm sorry but <laughs> You might want to skip this one um, and for my American viewers when we talk about pants in England we're talking about underwear not about trousers so we call pants trousers that, that you would call pants um, and what you would call panties is what we call pants so <laughs> pants means underwear <laughs> trousers means trousers so when I'm talking about pant leg I'm talking about the um, the leg of your knickers the leg of your underwear um, uh, just just to clarify because I think this might be a bit confusing for some people we also call diapers nappies so if I'm talking about nappies um, it's what you would call a diaper so hopefully this video will make sense in that context so I wanted to make reusable cloth alternatives to disposable maternity products so I came up with this pattern for a pair of postpartum underwear uh, which I'm calling my postpartum pants. It's essentially a um, adult cloth nappy or a maternity belt built into a pair of pants um, which contains inserts for absorbing the blood from after birth bleeding. The idea behind these pants is that you can wear the pants all day and just keep switching out the inserts um, as needed throughout the day to deal with the volume of bleeding that you happen to have. So the pants pop a closed and open up to reveal these inserts that can be slid out and switched out for a new insert as and when needed throughout the day. So I've made three inserts per pair of postpartum pants. These postpartum pants have a waterproof layer between the um, nice outer fabric and the inner flannel lining um, to stop any leaks and I've added these popper extenders which can be added in to add additional width around the, the belly measurement because I'm not 100% sure what size my belly measurement will be after the birth um, as I'm currently making these while eight months pregnant <laughs> so guessing from how large I am now to how large I'm going to be after the babies come out is kind of um, a difficult game to play. So I've gone for going under the bump. Um, if you were planning to have a caesarean section, that might not be a great place to have the rise of your um, postpartum pants. You might want to go higher. Um, but this adds an extra little bit of wiggle room in terms of what that final waist measurement is going to be. I've also added an elasticated um, section in the back which gives us a bit of play in that width as well so um, going from my eight month belly we can um, contract that a little bit as well in case I'm slightly smaller than I am now. So we've got a bit of wiggle room in terms of the waist measurement and um, we've got these nice elasticated um, legs around the gusset holding everything um, in nice and tight um, and then we've got a nice wide and loose gusset area so that there's nothing actually pressing on um, the area down below after you've given birth that's probably the last thing you want so that's the plan I'm going to go through and show you step by step in this tutorial how I made these now I don't do sewing tutorials with a pattern I won't release patterns because that's that's not really how I so I don't work from patterns most of the time I make my own patterns up as I go along and I'll show you how to craft your own pattern specific to your body or your specific needs so I'll show you which measurements to take how to draft the pattern and and go along from there so there's no releasable patterns with any of my sewing tutorials it's more based on taking measurements um, from your own body and working out from those measurements um, what what size and shape 
your pattern pieces need to be drafted to based on the instructions that I give. So that's why I don't release patterns. Um, I was asked this quite a lot on the face mask um, video and on several other um, sewing tutorials that I've done in the past. You know, what measurements did you use? What's your pattern? Um, it's based on your needs. So I will give you an idea of the, the general architecture and the general construction. Um, I will give you an idea of which measurements go in which parts of the, the pattern drafting, um, how to take those measurements um, you know, from the object or from yourself um, to work out how to make the thing. But the, the key thing really is that I'm not giving specific sizes. I'm not gonna tell you, you know, make this nine inches, make this 12 inches, you know, um, in, in terms of a, a sort of standardised pattern and I'm not going to release um, properly drafted patterns for things with sizes and, and, and guides on that front because most of the time I'm making things out of scrap material, repurposed, reused materials that I've taken from old garments, that I've taken from old bed sheets, old you know, tea towels, things like that, or old scraps of fabric that I have left over in my stash from previous projects. Um, and so the thing that I make will depend on the size of the supply that I have available or um, I'll be making things, you know, say a bag to go around a specific size of object. So I'll be making them to go on that size of object or I'll be making a coat for my dog. So it'll depend on the size of my dog or I'll be making something for myself, which will depend on, you know, the size of my body. So these things are in entirely personal to you, to your situation, to what it is you're trying to create, the purpose of the object that you're trying to create and the supplies that you've got available. So um, in any of those situations, really a, a formal pattern, you know, sort of a printed tissue paper pattern that you would cut out and, you know, pin onto your fabric and work from, um, it's not really the way that we're operating in this situation because we're trying to um, make things to answer specific purposes and to, you know, use specific supplies that we happen to have. Um, going spare rather than going out and buying new fabric for every new project um, and so that, that's why I don't do formal patterns um, and that's why my sewing tutorials are slightly different to other sewing tutorials that you might see on the internet. So that's that. Okay so I'm quickly going to talk you through the pattern, how to measure it and the pieces that I've cut out. So you're going to want to make a shape like this so you're going to want to take um, three measurements so the first one you're going to want to take is the rise which is from front to back between your legs where you want it to sit on your stomach and where you want it to sit on your back how long is that distance and you want to add an extra inch for seam allowance to that that length there then you're going to want to take the waistband measurement where you want it to sit at that point on your waist. Um, so that's going to be this distance across here. And to that you're going to add an extra inch for seam allowance. And then you're going to measure the leg band, um, which is going to be this curve here. So this curve doesn't actually need to match that leg band diameter exactly. It can be a lot larger because we're going to add this leg band in diameter in the um, smaller um, sort of knicker elastic that we're going to put around the leg band to cinch it in to that leg band measurement that you've taken. So that's around the leg where you want the actual pant part and um, pant leg part to sit um, on your on your leg. So that's what that um, curve is essentially going to be. So I've taken my measurements and I've cut out in my um, delightful pink and yellow flowery fabric. I've got loads of this so I'm going to use it for this project. Um, I don't particularly like it for anything else so I might as well. Um, and you're going to cut that shape to those measurements remembering your inch extra seam allowance on both the height and the width. So I cut that out as a square and then I folded it into quarters like this and I gave myself a four inch um, sort of waistband straight area. I also wanted to go straight up a little bit under the gusset before going into the leg curve so I made sure that my curve that I drew on here went up straight for a little while first before veering off into the side. I didn't want to go on a straight diagonal. Um, you want to measure between your 
legs at the top of your the top of your thighs how wide you want your gusset to be and um, I've added an extra two inches to that for seam allowance and because I don't want this to be too tight I want it to be very loose down there um, and have plenty of room and give because you don't want anything tight postpartum so measure that distance and then draw yourself a nice curve and cut that out with the scissors and when you open that up you'll have your shape so then I've cut out a strip of the PUL waterproof fabric that's the width of the gusset in the middle um, and goes up and down um, because of the length of my PUL I've ended up with a gap at the top and the bottom which is going to be where the waistband is and doesn't really need to be waterproof so I'm not worrying too much about that and I've pinned that PUL um, into place um, so that it covers the gusset and the front and the back of quite a large section. You can cut out the same shape and size um, in your um, flannel which is going to be the soft layer on the inside that's going to be touching the skin. Um, so I've gone for black because it doesn't show up stains and it's what I have um, but really this could be any any sort of flannel if you've got old flannel bed sheets you want to cut up or anything like that my um flannel that i have left over isn't exactly the right size so i'm going to improvise slightly but ideally you'd want it to be the exact same size and shape as your outer layer of fabric you then want to cut two strips and um, that will go exactly the width of your top piece there but i've given myself an extra half an inch of seam allowance here because I'm going to um, turn and hem that raw edge. And this is going to form the pocket that your um, insert will slip under. So we're going to make a toweling insert and towel and flannel insert separately that you can take out and wash, which means that you don't have to wash the actual um, nappy diaper pant part of this quite so often. I'm going to put my sewing machine on a zigzag stitch and I'm going to stitch this PUL layer into place. Now we're going to turn over and hem um, A quarter inch seam along one of the long edges of the two top pieces, two long strips. Next up we're going to sandwich our layers. So turn your um, outer layer right side up and then place your long strip um, right sides together along the top there with your newly hemmed edge at the bottom so that it lines up along the top and down the sides and then take your lining piece and line that up as well so mine is a bit short so I'm going to line it up along these bottom curves here and then we want to um, pin that all in place and do the same on the other end we're then going to stitch all the way around the outside and we're going to leave a four inch gap on one of the top pieces in order to turn it out. We're then going to turn everything inside out through that four inch gap that we've left. Now we're going to take a strip of one inch wide elastic that is one inch shorter at either end than the width of your long parts here and we're going to tuck that through the four inch opening and we're going to stretch it to the ends and sew it down and then we're going to do a very wide zigzag stitch all along the top there to hold it in place with it stretched out taut so that when it crinkles up it'll have a bit of um, a bit of stretch in that back section there if you're having a planned C-section, you might want to skip this part because you might not want it to be too tight. 
but as you're taking your waist measurements and things um, before you have the baby probably like me then you might want to add this just so that you've got a bit of give in case you know, end up a bit smaller than you are now. Now going to turn over those top two edges and top stitch along the opening and along the whole of that top side. So at this stage, this is what we should be looking at. We should be looking at one elasticated top edge with that opening closed and top stitched all along that long straight edge. We should have our two pockets here and we should have our flannel inner lining and our um, outer layer all combined into one. So we've essentially got line of our maternity nappy now and what we're going to do now is we're going to sew a channel all along this leg seam so we want to make that channel about half an inch wide and then we're going to cut little slits into the lining layer which we're going to feed a safety pin with our leg elastic on through to the other side stitch it down at both ends so that that'll give us our um, elasticated leg bands and we want that piece of elastic to be the same measurement that we took for our leg band measurement when we did our measurements at the beginning. So we're now going to take our safety pin and pin it through the end of our elastic and then we're going to thread that through the opening. So you would need to um, slice a little opening in the lining layer here. Because my um, inner lining layer wasn't long enough, I've actually left a little gap here. So I'm going to thread it in at that end. And then we're going to feed it along the channel that we've sewn, that half inch channel on the leg band make sure that you don't lose your trailing end. So I'm going to pin that trailing end in place so that it doesn't end up getting sucked in. I'll continue feeding this through that channel in the leg band using that safety pin. Feed it out at the other side. We've now got elastic fed through our leg band here. We're now going to take that elastic and we're going to stitch it down into place at the top and bottom of the leg channels so that it's firmly attached. So you want to go backwards and forwards across that elastic several times using the reverse on your um, sewing machine. Stretch it out, make sure it's not twisted and do the same at the other end of your leg band. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other leg band. And finally we're going to add our poppers to fasten the sides. So I'm going to add three poppers I think down each of these um, side edges with a slight overlap so that these two tabs can fasten together. Now for the inserts I measured the length right from end to end when it's stretched out from the top seam to the bottom seam so that it's all completely enclosed within the pockets. I measured the length and then I measured the width across the gusset and I cut one layer of 
um, toweling and one layer of flannel for each of my three inserts. I had some extra um, bits left over from the, the end of the flannel so I've attached those in the centre of the gusset. So if I show you the insert first, you can see here where I've attached the square in the centre of the gusset. I attached that first to the toweling layer with a zigzag stitch as you can see um, and then I sandwiched my layers so that the um, extra piece of toweling was on the outside and then there was the um, the right side of the toweling um, face to face with the flannel and I sewed around the um, three edges leaving the top edge open turned it inside out folded those in and top stitched along to close the opening I also top stitched the other end so that they match so that now I can put it in um, to my pockets with the flannel layer upright in the gusset so it'll tuck under at either end so because this is quite loose um, and flappy what I've done as you can see on this side here is I've pinned to either side of where the insert will go and I'm going to run a line of stitches just down on the outside of those pins to create a tighter pocket to tuck this up into into the waistband so this will pull out and tuck in to that pocket which should hold it more firmly in place around the waistband so now you can see that line of stitching creates a nice tight pocket for the insert to slip into If you've enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up it really does help me and make sure you click subscribe and the little bell notification so that you get updated every time I upload a video thanks for watching guys bye